whispered promises straight to my heart I'd never noticed But you were never there, you were never there hey. You gave me roses What's up everybody, welcome to my channel Welcome to Disrespectfully with There's Katie Maloney no and Dana Kathan. Unapologetically, no we're here to do what we want to do. Spilling the tea. Okay, you're going to see the comment like disrespectfully. <laughs> Thank you. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to my channel. I know we haven't done a Disrespectfully episode since the very first one, but I wanted to cover this episode because they go over the iHeartRadio Awards, what happened with Rachel, and some other interesting things as well. The title of this podcast is Say It With Your Whole Chest. And believe me, these girls say it exactly how it should be with their whole chest. And I think that's what the difference between what they had to say about the iHeartRadio Awards compared to how Rachel took it and what she had to say about the iHeartRadio Awards are two way different things. The show notes say it happened, so we have to talk about it. Updates on Girthmaster, iHeartRadio Music Awards, Joe's IG Story, FaceApp, and Nostalgia. Now, I know we're all here to hear their version of what happened at the iHeartRadio Music Awards. I do believe that the intro into everything is very important, but we'll see from there if we actually review the entire podcast, which I will let you know too as well. But let's get right into it. And don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and then go back and hitting your notifications to all so you can get notified every time I post a video or go live. You don't want to miss these. Girl meets boy. Boy's got a big d Boy is well endowed on the <laughs> internet. Girl is nosy. Girl watches all of boy's content. Girl has dreams. Boy slides into DMs. You guys, Earthmaster slid into my DMs. <laughs> official. He is just the loveliest guy. The best part is, is that he asked you to tell him about your dream. He did ask me to tell him about my dream. Did you tell him all the details? We were like DMing and I was like, this stays between us consenting adults. And he was like, yes, yeah, so cool. Like you as well, blah, blah, blah. But then to be fair, I did ask him if I, cause he was, first of all, he's very lovely. He listened to our episode and I was kind of horrified and was like, I need to listen to it back because I feel like I black out when I'm here. Like who knows what I say? And then yeah. I listen to it and I'm like, uh, but he was tickled pink. He thinks we're very funny and he was flattered and loved the conversation. So that's kind of how it started. And he was just curious about my dream. So I told him more detail than I will tell all of you. But we also were just chit chatting back and forth. And he he really just does seem like the nicest down to earth person. And then both of us separately talk to your friend that knows him. Mm -hmm. And she kind of backed all that up. And I love her, too. She's great. Shout out to Christina. Christina. We love you. She was she was also because <laughs> he told her that we were talking about. It. I know I meant to tell her like, hey, by the way, I kind of shared what you told me. So sorry, I didn't give you a heads up. I just kind of space that I'm really excited for you and the girth he, master. Look, the girth master, <laughs> it was being so sweet. He was like, we're so romantic in Italy. And I was like, we are romantic in Italy. And so now he's like, you know, maybe we'll be, be eloping there. So we'll see. But I or maybe you should just go to Italy and like live out your dream. We have options. But again, yeah. I mean, I'm I think your friend's a champion. I still have my doubts, but more than I truly want to be his friend. Like he is just seems like such a down to earth, wonderful person. And I have so many questions. So I want to give you guys more context to who the girth master is. Last episode, in episode 13, she, well, came across the girth master. I have the clip about how this all came about and the extended version of the story. So that way everything makes sense from here. So let's take a look at that now along with the TikToks. Anyway, we can talk about what's been going on in your life, your new fixation. Growth master? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you and the rest of the internet. I made a TikTok that actually blew up about it and he responded to it okay so i know that we are all responsible for our own algorithm okay i want to start with that our visual diet my visual diet 
I made a TikTok and I was like being, I was just being cheeky. And I was like, when you accidentally end up on Girthmaster TikTok, and I was like, So here's the thing. People, a bunch of people were like commenting like accidentally. And I'm like, okay, obviously I ended up on it for a reason. So there is a, an Australian porn star that I love. I don't even know if we call her porn star. She's like an OF person or whatever. Yeah. But I just really love how open she is. That's why I follow her, which mm -hmm. I'm sure people are trolling me like, I'm, like, I'm sure that's why. But I actually, her content is so authentic to me and she gets so much heat from incels and whatever. And she's just like, she would be a great guest on Disrespectfully. She's wonderful. Yeah. So they had a crossover because they did a video together. So they were like making a they had a, a lunch and they were like after getting a lunch after a special hang with friends and they both recorded each other and we're just like kind of looking around <laughs> and laughing and so I, I was like who's this girth master so i go to his tiktok and he has fantastic tiktok commentary as well his hands are the size of my skull he could pick my skull up like i am yeah. six five they're like bear paws or six they're like bear paws i'm sure he could pluck me by my head and just like move me around which i'm sure happens on his videos with his partners that he like actually hangs yeah out he'll do like uh people want to be like hold this hold it he, yeah he, mind you i'm this is i'm holding a small water bottle right now but it would be like his hand would be like i don't even know that how thing would it. disappear completely just, this would be gone oh this would he with maybe even just his index finger his giant hands okay <laughs> do you believe that hand size correlates to dick size not necessarily but when your hands are that big oh yeah this is no i'm saying like he's obviously tall and giant we know it but i'm saying in life do you believe that no i have no idea how i ended up so big like both of my parents are pretty average height and i ended up six foot six and just big in every way like this is a regular water bottle it's 17 ounces and just everything about me ended up huge i think my dad was maybe six foot my mom's fairly short honestly but somehow i ended up just i don't know a giant kid maybe there's something in the water in australia i believe that you think so I, not a hundred percent of the time i think there are outliers but i don't i usually like take note and then sometimes you know when you just you like it's I, I feel like it's typically not someone with giant no, hands but because I, do you believe that feet then also yes really remember my bowling date with his twinkle toes and he had to go back for a size nine or whatever i mean i i guess i'm that's me using it up to my imagination because we didn't sleep together but yeah i was like no goodbye we're done here i don't know i don't think so i've never i mean i've never had sex with someone that could share my shoes that like blew my mind is all i'm saying but <laughs> we don't fucking know anyway uh. so girth master he like loves to show his hand yeah people will be like hold a coffee cup and whatever so i'm like going through and I didn't, I don't have Twitter. So people are like, go look at his Twitter, like in the comments. So I, I ran, I broke an angle sprinting to Pornhub and I like type in girth master <laughs> and I find his TikTok. The gasp that I gusped when I first saw it and like, you know, the little thumbnails, it would be like next to a girl's face. And it was like the size of her face. And I was like, what is going on here? And then I saw a video of him comparing sizes, which is what I sent you a screenshot of. I got a screenshot of this. I sent this to several friends without context, just to like, then <laughs> people would be like, what? He had a wine bottle next to his, the girth master. And it is the size of a wine bottle, like up to the top with the neck of the wine. Now, we're all adults here. And if you're a child, get the hell off my page. But I also know how YouTube is and TOS and all that. I'm not going to be showing that picture. Listen, Google is a powerful tool. She did mix up saying she found his TikTok. She found the Twitter. That's all I'm going to give you. So if you want to go find that, those are the clues. But I will post the photo of the wine bottle he compared it next to. And I will say this. It literally, like, Dana was not joking. From the bottom to the top part, right before it gets skinny and it has that little neck, that's the size. And it was about the same width, too. Oh, my God. No way. No fucking way. I see why she's like shocked by it because i'm not gonna lie i was a little shocked like holy shit that's gotta hurt that literally has to hurt tell them what you did i had i had to myself go into my kitchen and like pick up a, a wine bottle and like hold it in my hand just to really get the full experience and just like really you know because you don't know that like, you see him holding it and you see his you know next to it and you're like okay but like he's got a big old hand and you know you can't really get you, you know it's hard to really get the whole visual so i had it myself and i was just like whoa like whoa well he's not lying mm. i'm like honestly how many like, women are in your ba in his basement in a different way who has survived that like 
I want to know who these women are. How many are. people have you split in half? And he's he had one a video. He slept with a girl who was like five foot tall, and she's so she's like such a small person in general. And I'm like, are you okay? Like, I'm worried about you. Do we need to put on an APB? So I make this TikTok, it blows up, and I feel like talking about TikTok views is like talking about money. It's like I got a million views, but they did it blew up, and I didn't do any hashtags or anything. It was really a throwaway TikTok. I wasn't like trying to get engagement. This he, is what you went viral for. This is what I fucking go viral for <laughs> for being on Girthmaster TikTok and everything. Like, what is your algorithm about? I'm like, well, you're not wrong. God damn it. So he comments on it and he follows me. And he like made some cheeky comment because he's oh, no, or he's oh, no. so his comment says, I'm so deeply sorry. I didn't get it either. And then Dana says, laugh out loud. OMG. I was trying to tag you tips hat respectfully. Tell Tasha I love her. And then Girth Master says, we love Tosh. So I guess that was like the little cheeky message unless I missed another one but that was the only one with him and her on the tiktok she made about the girth master i did see another comment on the disrespectfully page but we'll get there then he follows me on hey, instagram Sheila. <laughs> yeah he's like but another shrimp on the bobby eh? <laughs> he follows me on instagram has he slid into your dms he hasn't slid into anything because i don't want that <gasps> to happen he posted on instagram my tiktok and tags me and he like follows me on there and I responded back to him in the comments on TikTok and was like, tips hat respectfully. I should have said disrespectfully, I suppose. But I was ah. like, um, sir, a gentleman and a scholar, basically. But yeah, no, he didn't slide <laughs> in my DMs. He also says that he gets a bunch of people being like, come sleep with my wife in Arkansas. And he was like, I live in Australia. Why would I have time to go sleep with your wife in Australia? Like, blah, blah, blah. That was that. But then Katie, this is where it comes in. Your friend sent that TikTok uh, yeah, to you. Yeah, because I hadn't, I hadn't even seen this yet. I, I, I was unaware of like your recreational like girth master. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know what you've been up to. <laughs> so a friend of mine, she sends me like a screenshot of his repost of your post. And it's like, if you see me on TikTok or whatever, no, you didn't. And I was like, hold on, hold on. She goes, she goes, yeah, so this is my mate. I've actually slept with him twice. And I can tell you it's hectic. And she was like, yeah, she's basically, his dick is basically the size of a wine bottle. And I'm like, excuse me? And I was like, hold on, I got to go look at this. And then I'm like, I got to go look at like his TikTok or whatever. And she goes, oh, well, I'm just laughing at what you're about to see. And I was like, well, I only see like giant hands. I didn't, I, I didn't realize that there was like a whole another section of what you were Leia, looking at. <laughs> do you want Do you want me to text it to you right now? Yes. So I want you to react. You have to things. consent to it. You have to, yeah, I'm consenting. I consent. Okay, consentingly sending it. Um, Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, so I was like, well, I'm just seeing like big hands and him like lifting up tiny women. And like, it's just, I'm like, okay. I mean, like there was like a gray sweatpant video, which I'm like, all right, I see some, I see like the, you know, the outline. So I'm like, all right, I, I can, I guess he's working with something over there. And then use him. Which again, it wasn't like a different side of TikTok or any of that. Be warned. I'm warning you. If you go look him up on TikTok, you are going to see R-rated videos and pictures. That is where the other side that Katie didn't realize wasn't the same side, but a different social media platform. It was on Twitter, X, whatever you want to call it. It's X-rated for sure. So be fucking where, ladies and gentlemen, because if you don't want to see something like that, then don't even search Girth Master in Twitter. Just just, just my thoughts for you. Yeah, so yeah, she she basically was like, the only reason why I was able to like handle it is because I've given birth to two children, but like... Oh. <laughs> Leia, react. <laughs> tell what you're saying. React on... It's mic. literally the size of a wine bottle. Could you could you imagine? No, By no. the way, when I just selected that photo and I clicked send, do you know it suggests the most hostile, just like in your Instagram stories, people? I almost just sent that to that guy that I that soft goes to me who claims <laughs> I ghosted him. <laughs> I almost just sent him the girth master. You know what? When people ask you for a picture, hey, 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 baby, send me a photo. <laughs> send that. And then no one will ever like uh uh Katie, that is the most genius thing I have ever heard in my entire life. The most threatening dick pic possible. <laughs> it's so hostile. <laughs> Petition Katie to make this a new system. Next time someone asks you for a pic and you don't, and they're annoying and you don't want to do it, go find the Girth Master, find the wine bottle photo, and send that to them. Yeah, I'm gonna send it to my ex right now. Like that's like <laughs> this, so smart. This is like way left field, but or like hard left. But it's like when um you wear like a band shirt. Do we talk about this on here? No, but when we you, need to. When you wear a band shirt and a guy comes, you like, oh name name uh five songs or three songs by the band, and you're like name three women that trust you. <laughs> name three women that feel safe around you. Or that feel safe around you. Name three women that you've made come. Yeah, you can't. Mm. doesn't exist exactly but i mean like this kind of situation it's like when they have the nerve to ask for a photo she's like oh here you go oh you meant a me of me oh were you gonna send me one of you <laughs> that's cute katie this is one of the funniest things i've ever heard you say and genius pure genius we are everyone start doing that and also then send us in your stories of what their responses are because <laughs> this is yeah so yeah she
honestly, when I first heard this, I was like, oh my God, that is literally pure genius. Like when, or if you even want to see the photo, you will then completely understand. And like, I, that's the petty Betty in me. Like, God damn, Katie, that's such a great idea. Especially like when these guys, like I'm not a single woman anymore, but like when these guys are like, oh, send me a picture of you. We all know what they fucking want send them the fucking girth shot. Oh my God. Like that's pure genius and harmless, but pure genius. Katie, 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 I am giving you props, girl. And send them the stories because I know they'll love to talk about it on their podcast. And let me know if you do, because I mean, now I'm trying to think, who can I send this to? Even just one of my girlfriends, I think, oh my God, Jenny, watch out, girl. If you're listening, I if you get a picture in no context, and then you listen to this, this is why. <laughs> Love you, girl. Amazing. I think your friend is being really generous that saying just hectic. Hectic is crazy to me. You would need to train for months before trying to summit that thing. What would the training be? I mean, I know it's okay. Like, so when you want, when you're preparing- Eagles. <laughs> No, because Kegels no, you keep you tight. Anti- What's right. the anti-Kegel? What is the opposite of a Kegel? You buy a pair of like four steps and you're just like... <laughs> yeah, yeah, you, yeah, exactly. You just go to your, your gyno and you're like, hey, can I borrow a speculum, so? please? Or a speculum. Yeah. Is a four step, what are four steps? Four steps are like grabby things. Okay, no speculum. So just, so just crank that like an old... You know, like a drawbridge <laughs> opening up. Just get that ready to go and just hold it and do yeah. some breath work. It's like you need tequila. You know, anal butt plugs, but for the vagina. The anal training kit. The, <laughs> the anal training kit, but for your... Ooh, ha. your vagina, which obviously anatomically is meant to be able to stretch for childbirth. But yeah, that is not, I don't know. I just can't imagine in the videos that I watched, which led to a really weird dream. Which we'll talk about. <laughs> That's my favorite part is you had a dream about him. So in the videos I watched, my point, like I never, <laughs> first of all, I only like ethically consume porn, but I don't like it if I'm watching straight porn. I don't like it when the, I know the woman's not having a good time. I'm like, I see enough of that in my own life. I'm like, I, I want to, unless you are loving it, I'm not into it. I see enough of that, like, behind my own eyes. But I've, I've lived, <laughs> I, why would I want to go through my own lived experience and trauma? I mean, to be fair, the body is an incredible thing and can withstand a whole hell of a lot. Excuse the assholes in the background driving reckless. Um, but... I personally can't even imagine that either. Like, that has got to hurt. Like, I'm worried for the girl that lost her virginity to him. Because <laughs> I don't know if she made it. <laughs> I feel like Dana now. I really do. Yeah. So then I had a dream about him. And it's the kind of dream that you think that I had. But it was so weird. I was in Italy. I was with Raleigh. I lost her. <laughs> the romance. With the romance. And what I mean, me and Raleigh have gone to Italy together before. And I like lost her. And then I found him. And I was like, but you're Australian. Why are we in Italy? And then we hooked up. And in the dream, I don't want to get too graphic, but I had a great time. But then, but there was part of it where it hurt. And you know, pain in dreams, it's not like pain in real life. Like I knew it hurt, but they say you can't feel pain. Do you believe that? Well, yeah. You, yeah. It's yeah. not like real pain. So like mm-hmm. I, my like, conscious thoughts came to the dream which were this there's no way this would work for my physical body but then i was kind of in love with him i was like enamored like i was in limerence with him then i woke up and i'm like obsessed with him now in the weirdest way like i don't want to i would never ever sleep with him not because i don't think i physically could he's also in la right now you're like thinking about it he's in la right now for the Pornhub awards which i thought was so funny he deserves all the awards i'm sure the accolades but yeah i've had a weird week and it's mostly been about this but do you know, have you ever had a dream about someone that you would not, you don't even want, and then you have a dream about them, you wake up and you feel differently? I'm haunted by those dreams. Yes. That's a thing. Yeah. Right? No, dude, it's the dream. Dude, I told, <laughs> I told some people about, like, when I've had, like, sex dreams about people that, like, that I used to work with. That you used to work with? Yeah. And? What do you mean, and? Then you, what, slept with them? No. Or just, like, made you feel, like, be like, huh. No, I, I ended up telling them, but they ended up finding out, and they're like, well, was I any good? <laughs> it was awkward. And were they? Yeah. Because even when I've had sex dreams about people, like don't, you, then you have the the other part of that is having sex dreams about people you would never. Oh ever, no, I've had sex dreams about people I hate, hate, hate. Well, and are repulsed by or whatever. Don't get any ideas. You're not. It's not the people you're thinking about. Yeah, if you don't think get any ideas, relax. And those dreams are the worst. But like, even those, it's a physical thing. You can have orgasms in your dreams. So it's like also you'll like then will like sleep with someone and it'll be technically good because it's in your dream, but you hate them and you just don't. You would never have sex with them in real life. I would also oh. again hats off to you, sir. I would never have sex with the Girthmaster because I would like. You keep saying that, but ever. I think I think it's, I think it, who are you trying to convince? I can't agree. Dreams like that are so intense and so crazy. 
and so fucked up, especially if it's someone that you really despise or hate. It can definitely make you think about somebody a completely different way. And in my opinion, Dana is now in factuated. I think she wants to know how, how does it work? Um, how am I going to be able to, like, I think she is trying to convince herself she doesn't want to, but she definitely is very interested to know. <laughs> and it's clear. And I love her when she's like this, because this is like, I I've been dying the last two days listening to this when they put it out and then even editing with this for you guys been dying. I, this is why I had to put this in this episode with you guys so you had a better understanding of who the girth master was and just be able to relax and enjoy the episode. I don't Yourself? Know. He's also just not my type, but I'm like so can't stop. I, what about just like the like tip? <laughs> no, even that is offensive. You could have sex with his finger should, and that would be like, that would be this. Yeah, basically a normal experience. If you know the <laughs> meme with like the hamster with the banana. What? Do you know what I'm talking about? It's like the, you have like the most obscure. No. First of all, Everyone knows I'm what really is. bummed with like the, what was the last trend that you came up with? There's no way you haven't fucking seen this. What was the, <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> That's you. <laughs> Everyone seen that. Literally. So this, I literally can't stop thinking about it the, in terms of like, yeah, no, even this is what it would be. The last trend you're like, what's your craziest, wait, let me explain or whatever. And you're like, it's supposed to be like really bad, but people were like doing like Obama and like hot yeah, people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's, and, hear me, what's your craziest, hear me out. Yeah. What is your craziest, hear me out. And you're like, but there's supposed to be like bad ones and you're, but like none of them are bad. And then I saw one of me. <laughs> like, what the fuck? You've officially made it. You're in the zeitgeist as a crazy hear me out. But that's offensive. I was like, what? Yeah. So I don't, don't, don't bring this to me anymore. I well, And then I saw <laughs> one of Tom Sandoval at, right after that, which yeah, is maybe so, my shaping algorithm, which that means. I don't want to be thrown into categories. I don't feel like I belong in. Didn't make sense. Anyways. But I think you should, I don't know, maybe flame a story or something and oh, see if there's a, I got, I'm like, it's, start it's literally two Sex and the City references. One of which is when Miranda's getting sexually harassed by that sandwich outside <gasps> of Limpy's. Yeah. And then all of a sudden she's like, I can't have sex with a sandwich. Can I? And like, it's not something she would normally ever want. There's just like this weird interaction that happens. Mine was in a dream. Then <laughs> when Samantha meets the stallion, he's like, most women can't handle it. And she's like, ding, ding, ding. And she, he takes it out and she's like, and the thing is, I think that that's, that guy walked so Girth Master could run. We never saw it. Well, I'm just saying, that's what I'm assuming that it looked like. But I feel like he's like definitely like your type. Yeah, either way, I don't know what's going on. I need to get off the internet for a little while for that. Take a, take a breath, go touch some grass. Maybe touch. Well, you'd have to find a new co-host because I just, I yet to believe. I want to see, I want to see proof of life of one of the women he slept with. I want a newspaper. I told, I know one. Oh, I guess that's true. You know an IRL one. Why'd she do it a second time? I'd be curious. Because she made it through the first time. So do you think that she did it because she, for the second time, because she liked it or because she could? She can't go back. <laughs> It's her only, her only path forward. I mean, all she said it was like, it was like hectic because it was massive. I don't think she said it was like a terrible experience. But to be fair, I did do it to myself because I watched so many of these videos out of curio morbid curiosity because it was so shocking. I was like just flipping through to see every single type of person he was with. And how many videos did you watch? So, so, <laughs> how many videos does he have out? The limit does not exist. Whatever is on Pornhub is what I watched. Damn. So anywho, that's been a fun journey for the week. But I can't believe he's in LA. I was like, sent it to, or I think I sent <laughs> it to you that he was there. I was like, he's I mean, kind of like serendipitous I would, I would say well maybe next time someday i'll be down and back when we visit it then but anyway that's that's the girth master story it's girth master with two r's <laughs> go check it out for yourself so many people are in the trenches with me now we're like you just ruined my day a lot of people are like really excited about it now i'm kind of curious to know who her friend is that clearly had relations with this man from all the hints that we got that they dropped, sounded like she was also an Australian because she said that's my mate. Um, sounds like, well, she has two kids. So it has to be a friend that has two kids and is single. <laughs> and clearly has to be in the, you know, S working industry slash OnlyFans slash that kind of stuff. Because that's what it seems like their connection was, which you will see why I'm suggesting this, because I'm curious. 
in a couple minutes because they do mention somebody else that connects Dana with him and it doesn't really make sense that it would be her but let's all speculate at this point. Now we are getting back into episode 14 where we originally started where she is now going to talk about how the girth master has now contacted her since a week later from that podcast we just saw. So we are putting it into the universe. He's here for a month and basically he was like, would love to connect, but I'm busy. Are you coming to Australia anytime soon? I was like, am I going to Australia? No, I'm, I don't have any plans on the calendar, but I'd love to. But we would like him to be the first official guest of Disrespectfully. <laughs> Let's make it happen. It's possible that we're going to put this in the universe and it'll flop, but sometimes you have to risk your business. He's going to be here for a month and he's not going to carve out a little time for you? I mean, he's a, he's a busy guy. I'm sure. His, Did he ask you to hang out? Well, he said he would like to, but he doesn't have time here. So he's like, are you going to be in Australia soon? I'm going to Italy this or Europe this summer. He's here now. I know. I thought that too, but I'm not going to press him. I don't know. Okay, I'm listen. sure. Look. I'm sure his girthy schedule is all booked up. I get it. Okay. I'm sure he has <laughs> lots of girthy engagements. But yeah, I'm like, please make two hours for me. But instead of like showing you around town, I'm going to show you the studio and we'd like you to be a guest. Instead of showing me around town, show me some of that. I'm just kidding. Well, also, because we were going back and forth in comments and I was like, kind of, you know, and then he like followed me on Instagram and I was like, so you can just slide in my DMs and then he never did. So I was like, oh, okay. And then I saw his DM yesterday and smiled from ear to ear and immediately sent it to you because I was so excited. Oh, my. I bet the girth master has a very girthy schedule. I just don't understand why he can't see her while he's here for a month. I bet he's a very busy man. I will say, though, he had the time to go over to the podcast page. Yesterday, when they posted this new episode, he decided to go over there and leave a comment saying, Hey, ladies. And, of course, one of the fans said, This is the next Taylor Swift, Travis Kelsey I didn't know I needed in my life. I don't really know if they would make a great couple, but hey, you never know. Dana is a unique and an incredible individual, in my opinion, and I think he's pretty unique, too. I don't know if that's her dynamic, though. I mean, we are the coven. We are the witches, so we have powerful minds, and sometimes I forget that. I make that you do have a powerful mind because on Monday... Oh, no. you talk about it? I didn't want to, but then... Joe's story requires a conversation. Yeah. Well, we could share our time and touch on it. Yeah. Okay, so Dana and I went to iHeart Radio Music Awards. And it was on Monday. And it was a really good time. But we had a feeling that we were going to run into someone we once knew. Just because she'd been to these events in the past. We're talking about Rachel Levis. All right. This is the part that we want to know about, hear about. Let's see how these ladies handle the situation and i was like you know what there's gonna be so many people there like maybe we might like see her from across the room who knows but like i'm not gonna put that out there <laughs> but you did i was like no we're gonna see her and uh, there'll be an interaction so we get in line for the carpet and i turn around and she's getting out of her car i mean we're like feet she's away, right behind we're us. feet away from each other and i just look at katie <laughs> and i was like rachel's right there and like, it's like of course she looks so visibly uncomfortable i'm like i'm just like standing here i'm really not paying you any attention or mind i'm just waiting to like Go get my picture taken so I can go inside and get a drink. I'm not trying to like make a situation happen here. But she just was like really trying to not make eye contact, trying to, she was just, she was trying to skip the line. She was trying to get away from us. And I'm like, man, I don't, I don't care. And it might seem that way because I'm sitting here talking about it right now. I get it, but like I gotta talk about it because <laughs> it happened. Well, the thing is, we're just like, we truly were just existing. We're not trying to make anyone feel uncomfortable. We were not gonna interact with her. Obviously, we had nothing to say. I'm mm -hmm. sure she would not wanna see us. And I'm sure we're gonna get a cease and desist letter for existing soon. I'm sure she's <laughs> going to sue us for existing. But that was a little uncomfy, but is what it is. And, you know, I was thinking about this because people are like, move on. It's been so long, whatever. And I'm like, no, I get that for the rest of the world. But she's someone who hurt one of the most important people in my life. And mm -hmm. so I'm I'm never going to forget that or well, and, move on for it. It doesn't mean I want and to have continues any... to do so. Continu you know, yeah, continues to do so. So it's a, it's a bit hard to just completely move on from it and pretend that she doesn't exist because she's out here running her mouth so yeah you know and i honestly do feel that katie and dana both were not trying to make her feel uncomfortable and if she was uncomfortable and then making it awkward trying to skip the line or stand back so she doesn't have to be next after them or all of that that becomes then clearly obvious because you are visibly seeing her do that and then it can definitely really feel uncomfortable to a lot of people and 
I think they were just like, oh gosh, well, just stop kind of a thing. And I I see where like, I get where Rachel has her issues, but she needs to like overcome them and conquer them and realize like these events, you are possibly going to see people you don't want to see. Hold that head up high like these ladies are doing and just keep doing your thing. And that's where Katie and Dana have that and Rachel doesn't yet. In my opinion, that is. What do you guys think? Let me know down below. Yeah, that's happening. No, that's definitely part of it. But we got through that little hiccup. But then iHeart was so fun. I'm so glad we went. It was a combination of arguably every powerhouse I'd ever want to see in a room. It was insane. Meryl Streep was there. On guys. one stage, Meryl Streep, Cher, Jennifer Hudson. Just think about it. Cher performing, do you believe? I almost collapsed like the, it, I just I didn't even know that I needed to see share live in my life before that and now I'm like I need to go to a full Cher I, need, I like, need more immediately and she looks amazing I'm like she looks the same as she did in burlesque okay props to her yeah. her doctors sign me up who is doing your work you look great but she was like talking about she had these pants on that she's, were she's like I know what you're thinking do I only have one pair of pants she's like I've had these for 40 years I'm like I'm not even 40 years old yet <laughs> close but I have pairs of pants that don't fit the same way from six months ago. Thank you. That's what I was just thinking. I was like, hold on. I can't even fit in the same pair of pants from last year. Well, that's not true. But how? Anyway. But do you know what I, what I love the most about it? Because, you know, I've been to other award shows and it's like, you got to sit there. They got to name all the nominees. And, and then we might get like a couple performances sprinkled in. But what I loved is that everyone that performed was the winner of their category. So like there was just performance after performance. They get their award. They're like, thanks, everyone. And then on to the next. So it was just it was like a. A concert essentially just of like all these different musical acts from like different genres like jelly roll and then uh tlc justin timberlake green day so you were just getting just hit after hit green, crazy green day two songs that i was we were obviously geeking out about that too i was just like i mean i it, it felt like i made up this event in my brain and then mm -hmm. it executed and see this is what i wanted to hear about the iheart radio music awards like i wanted to hear about how the event went, who performed, who was there, all of that. Rachel had more to say about what she did wrong to Katie and Dana than the actual event. And to me, seeing all of those different performers, that is like a once in a lifetime thing. And it had to be killer like i love a great concert i'm a concert going girl so you know what i mean like this is what i wanted to hear about the event and you know rachel disappointed katie and dana came through win for that i will give them a win obviously what i was most excited about besides a couple of performances Beyonce was there accepting mm -hmm. the Innovator Award. and the last From Stevie Wonder, of all people. What? Yeah. Also, he played harmonica on, I can't remember what song it is now, but she, I didn't even know that until she said it when she was talking to him. I'm like, of course, because mm -hmm. they're both brilliant artists. But last time I saw her was at the Renaissance Tour in September. And me and Logan and Ariana and Raleigh and our other friend, Ariana, who also listens to the avid listener to the show. So shout out Ari. We were front row. So that was, and that's like, I've seen her like six times in concert. So that was the closest I'd ever been. But we had great seats. And so we were close. She looked amazing. And even mm -hmm. to just hear her speak for a few minutes, I was like, screaming under my breath and grabbing Katie's arm. You're probably bruised from the amount of time I grabbed her. Yeah, you, after every sentence she spoke, you were like, woo, woo. You were full on woo girl. Oh, the people around us hated us. And I was like, Dana. I, I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. I know. I know. I get it. it just I, was, I, I just let you do your thing. You let me be me, which was great. But Meryl, I almost fangirl mm -hmm. out about as much. Like, oh my gosh. Who doesn't love Meryl Streep? But I mean, my I love Meryl. dearly departed mother was a huge Meryl Streep fan. So I'm like, she would just, I mean, well, you know, she's, gone mm -hmm. but she would just die and die again and she would laugh at that joke so fucking relax if you're being precious about it at home but yeah i was so happy to see that icon and the fact that they're still good friends by the way fun fact you cannot find silkwood anywhere yeah we tried to when we, got, we, got home. <laughs> we got home me and katie got wine we got dinner martinis then wine and we're whole wasted doing yeah. our skincare routine and then looking for silkwood and we couldn't find it so if anyone knows where we can stream that let me know but we Ooh, we're, we're gonna circle back to that but I was and this is what i mean meryl street beyonce stevie wonder Green Day, like there were just so many people share, like when even like looking at who was there, like there were so many amazing artists and people there. And I'm so glad that they are actually talking about the iHeartRadio Awards. This is literally all I've been wanting 
from when Rachel talked about it, and she literally said nothing about the whole thing at all. The only thing she cared about was Katie and Dana. And all I wanted to know was, how the fuck was this event? I want to know who was there. I- I'm so happy. I love hearing all of this. I was going to say, I have met Stevie Wonder before. Where? Okay, at Sir. They had his daughter's birthday party there. Cause what I was, year was this? Oh, God. It had to have been like 2011, maybe. 2010, mm. 2011. Because I was like one of the few people at Sir that would work lunch shifts. So it was like a daytime thing. And they like rented out the space or, you know, they wanted the whole space for his daughter's birthday. So he came in and he was as wonderful as you, Stevie Wonder, being wonderful. Uh, yeah. Was this before the show started? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. What an incredible mm-hmm. celeb interaction. It was, and he was just the sweetest. Yeah. I bet he's such a lovely guy. Family, wonderful. Everyone was wonderful. So I feel fortunate. Yeah, that's, well, I mean, amazing. And so him and Meryl, there were people that I just didn't even expect mm-hmm. to see there that we did. And also to your point, I too loved, like, it was two hours, which was the perfect amount of time. It wasn't like this long drawn out thing. We stayed for an hour and 40 minutes. The second Beyonce <laughs> walked off, I was like, I got to pee, let's go. We were hungry. My feet hurt. I'm not really fully built for those types of events because I, as much as I love putting on a dress, getting, you know, putting on some makeup, getting, you know, getting like done up like that, I don't wear heels often. And, you know, after about 40 minutes of that, I'm pretty done. Oh, we were miserable. The second, like, <laughs> I'm, I'm mad that the current gen-, gen Z all get to wear sneakers like we do to the bars mm-hmm. and whatnot. And we were all in business attire in 2012 in six inch platform <laughs> heels. Like yeah. that's what we were wearing out. And you guys get to wear baggy jeans and like little crop mm-hmm. tops and sneakers. It, you, yeah. None of you have bunions and it shows. And I'm just like, I love a sneaker. We were, our feet hurt immediately and we were starving because we didn't eat before. And so we were like, yeah, where the fuck can we get a meal and get out of here? I mean, shit. I remember being 20, 21, 22, going to the club and you couldn't even get into the club as a female If you were wearing flats, like sneakers, you had to have heels, like, and then to dance all night on those heels. I mean, two hours where you're just listening to music, jamming out, getting a couple acceptance speeches, and it's all the amazing artists of that time period, and then some, like, that's an incredible event, and I'm so glad that they got to talk about it. We learned something new about Katie, that she was able to waitress for Stevie Wonder's event when she worked at Sir. That is interesting and kind of shocked that they didn't air that on Vanderpump, did they? I don't believe so. Definitely got to go back and check that out. She said 2011, 2012. Pretty sure they were on the air at that point. So, yeah, definitely got to check that out. If you remember, let me know down below. Yeah, so we bounced. So, we, yeah, we did that. But speaking of dresses, this is why I'm circling back to even mentioning, I thought it was relevant to mention the Rachel thing, which we discussed not even oh. doing. So Joe, who some of you may know from Vanderpump Rules, I got tagged in it and I sent it to Katie on a TikTok. She posted this story. So this like, I don't know what the publication was, but they posted it was like, life and style, life and style posted like lists of, you know, different people's photos on the red Best carpet. Best and worst dress. Best and worst dress. So Rachel was like a, either one above us or a few above us. So it was, it was a screen recording, not even a screenshot. And she's like, wow, work. I love your outfit. And then she had this like circle on Instagram stories. You know what I'm talking about? They move the little gifts or whatever. And it was down at the bottom. And she scrolled down to us, me and Katie, that got worse dressed on that list. And also we looked hot fire. I'm not worried about that. She circles it and then just holds it there. And then her next story is a photo of her from the reunion tagging her stylist. You know, because Joe is internationally known for her style choices. The Tom Tom hat. Now, this is Joe's TikTok. I also showed this on Rachel's chapter 17 i made a mistake podcast episode where i go over the whole iheart radio story so check that out there but this is also joe from the reunion her dress and her with andy cohen but also this is what some people were saying regarding her dress The OG of the VPR stuns at her first reunion, this person says, which then Drew shares it on Twitter and says, she dressed like the lamp from a Christmas story. I would kind of not agree with that statement, though I did see another comment and I looked everywhere for it. Apparently I didn't save it. I think I saw it on Reddit, though, that someone compared her to the clock in Beauty and the Beast. And that is more of the vibe, if anything, that I see. 
Personally, though, this is not my style. This is not something I would choose. It wouldn't be a first choice nor a last choice. But if this is her style or what she was going for, then props to her for rocking it. I personally think she could have gone with something better than that. And when Katie says, well, or Dana, well, look at her style. Literally, look at her style. Th that, that to me... If she was on the fizzle or sizzle, she would be a fizzle. What do you have to yeah. say about that, Katie? Not much. I saw that. I was like, I'm going back to bed. <laughs> like, I see that. I'm just like, that's all you have to say? Like, I feel like you could have done better. Yeah. Like, if you're, if you're going to if you're gonna try to shade, that's not very good. Well, Sorry. I'm not surprised you went back to bed because it was boring to me. But what bothered me about it is I just don't have a passive aggressive bone mm. in my body, nor do you. So if you want to shade some, tag us. At me. Tag us, girly pop. At me. You don't, like, don't got to do all that. And, say like, it with your whole fucking chest. Say it with your whole chest. 10 toes down, tag us and be like, hey, you guys look like shit. Even this magazine says so. <laughs> you don't just like hover over where it says worst and then like scroll away. It's like, girl. Like, well, it's, it's like, that's yeah. just how I picture her. Though. I mean, the way I've physically seen her move in the world, she's like, <laughs> like <laughs> creature. Like that's how she is. So that's that story was a manifestation of, I think, who she is as a person. Well, Made sense. it's also just kind of like um, I've acknowledged that, you know, when I came for her on the Internet, I was in a very different place in you know my life and I was going through a very difficult time and transitioning from you know my divorce and everything like that so I was I was just in a different place I wouldn't respond or post those things or say those things now and you know I've I watched like the season and you know I, I felt you know bad for what she went through like with you know like I've acknowledged those certain things so it's like it's weird that like she's now choosing to kind of like have this weird sort of I don't know it's 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 odd to me well I've never done anything to that girl if you have something to say you can go ahead and tag me well i can't tag her because she's blocked me who knows maybe i'm blocked too but regardless <laughs> i'm just like i don't know even if you're not going to tag just say it really directly just say and by the way lol do you guys see and these two look like shit which we don't we look fucking hot fire so i couldn't agree more like if you are going to sit there and be a fucking petty betty like joe and rachel then say it with your whole chest now if they are blocked like I don't think that Katie or Dana has her blocked. I think it's the other way around. Then unblock them and then tag them. Like, and I like that Katie is taking accountability, knowing that she was in a very dark, vulnerable time when all of that was happening. When she made that comment about Joe and she's owning up to it. And I know she's also apologized. I don't know directly to her, but I know she's said that she's apologized and then apologized again, even in the after show about the comment that she made. And Rachel literally said in her last podcast, not the new one with Joe, which that is next, guys. So hopefully you are all subscribed to my channel with notifications on because that's coming out after this. But even Rachel admitted in her last episode that they were not dressed ugly at all. They were looking amazing. And she literally did it to just be petty. And like I said there, there's ways to be proud of being on a best dress list and embrace it without tearing others down just because you don't like them and then there you were at the iheart radio awards making it even more awkward and weird trying to skip the line like she does things to make people talk in that sense do you get what i'm saying like she could have just acted fucking completely normal went posed for the camera you know yeah i'm posing and then like did her interviews went to the concert slash award show and enjoyed it she chose to let people that were there affect her presence there and not have a good time in my opinion and listen, maybe I'm just that girl, because, like, my sister-in-law will tell you, at her bachelorette weekend, it was a weekend, um, her friends didn't really know me until that weekend, let's just say, and they didn't really like that I was a pothead, long story short, um, they tried to ice me out, and instead, 
joke was on them because I can have a fun time all by myself. So when we went to that tractor wagon in Nashville and everyone was dancing and drinking on the tractor, they were sitting there in the corner miserable and I'm sitting there on the bench shaking my booty and having fun with everybody else around me. That's the energy Rachel needs to bring. And I get like feeling uncomfortable You work yourself into those moments and how you will handle yourself and you get to a point that you are capable of doing that as long as you put the work, time, and effort into it and you truly make it so like you really don't care about anyone else but yourself and what you need to do to make yourself happy and enjoy the time. That's like all I wish for anybody But I feel like Rachel just can't let go. And it proves even more with everything that she does that she can't let go. And Joe, I feel like with Katie, and I know this is a longer rant, but I feel like Katie, Joe and Katie were friends. And when the divorce happened, Joe messaged Katie saying like, you know, I got your back, girl. Like, I'm so sorry. Like, all of that. And then Joe pretty much iced her out for Schwartz and it made it seem like she was only friends with Katie for him and now that he was newly single she didn't care about Katie she really liked Schwartz and she wanted to go for it so I mean I can see why Katie was a petty Betty and had all of these dark emotions and thoughts when all of that went down and was kind of mean and cruel because she was going through her own and here is this person that you expect to you know have your side and be there for you because they express that and then go and do an opposite that was Joe Joe and Rachel are very similar and I think that's why they get along so great but when they're together yes they do instigate each other and I don't think it's for the best but that's my opinion what do you guys think about all of this? Let me know down below. Yeah, I'm not particularly worried about it. But yeah, I just thought that was uh, some real silly goose behavior. I actually, I was audibly cackling when I sent it to our disrespectfully production group. I was like, you guys. And I'm sorry, how were we possibly worse? I, I don't know. The how- comment, the comment, well, obviously Rachel's manager wrote that or something. But her publicist. Her publicist. Her publicist that like talks shit. In, in like a comment section about me? Yeah, probably that one. Why would you have a messy public? I don't know. Listen, girl, uh, Godspeed to you. Well, she's not very good at her job because she tried to get Rachel to cut the line for the carpet to avoid us. And then they just plopped her right behind us. So on whatever publication it is, it said worst dress. They weren't cohesive. And I'm like, what was I supposed to do? Get Katie a fucking boutonniere? This was prom. Yeah, we weren't matching. It wasn't like we're podcast partners. We're life partners, what? but we're not. That was their comment on it. But regardless, even if someone doesn't like what I'm I'm good with that. But objectively, we looked hot. People have been hating on my style for years and I still don't give a flying fuck. So I will say uh, Rachel's publicist, she tries to, you know, have that it girl and, you know, women empowerment. But she is a petty betty as well and has, yes, talked a lot of shit about a lot of them and I understand you're doing what's best for your client and the best interest for your clients but you don't need to say the things that you do about other people and like professionally it doesn't look well and that's like your job that's just my opinion on her publicist the more I look into it man the more I just don't like the lady and that's my bias but I don't let that affect my opinion when she's talking on a podcast and saying the things that she's saying and it's like what because we all know so you know and I'll give it to Katie too they have been hating on her style for years and I think Katie's style evolves with her and her personality and it's very unique and different and I'm digging this style that she has going on. I think it's the best error for her styling. And she looked bomb at the reunion in that silver dress. And I said it in the comments and I didn't say it on the podcast. And I don't know why I didn't on Rachel's. But my opinion about Rachel and the iHeartRadio Awards and her dress. Listen, she has been friends with the designer that the dress was made by for years. So, of course, she's going to get designed by the best. And Gildy is a wonderful designer. 
But I also feel like that was Rachel's moment to be like, if this is what I could have wore at the season 11 reunion, this is what I would have wore. Look at me kind of a thing. And she did look great. She looked incredible. I don't know if the black villain fits her more than it fits her as a petty betty and I don't know. She looked good though. I cannot take that away from her. Just like Katie looked good. I actually preferred Katie's dress at the iHeartRadio Awards over Jennifer Hudson's who had a very similar sequence like style where Jennifer had feathers on her sleeves and Katie had like the poof on the sleeves and it was shorter. I liked Katie's a hell of a whole lot more than Jennifer Hudson's who actually got a sizzle and Katie got the fizzle. And like Dana said, like cohesive that's the comment and I I made remarks about this on Rachel's as well like the way that they worded Rachel's like Rachel like ex um our VPR cast member and when they went right under to Katie they were just like uh this is a fizzle because they weren't cohesive they didn't say like who the people were they could have said like you know, VPR cast member Katie Maloney and ex-VPR cast member Dana Cathan. Like, I feel like maybe Katie knows something we don't about maybe the publicist having people that she knows over there, and that's why it was done that way. But, you know what's funny? Karma works in magical ways, and guess what? She tried to skip the line, her publicist tried to help, and she still got stuck behind them. That's that's how it goes. <laughs> Go on. Well, you know, I really loved Joe's outfit there. Oh, wait, Joe wasn't present. At night, so <laughs> anywho, Anywho, so we'll go back to my place. We're trying to find Silkwood. We can't find it. So like, what are we else are we going to watch? So we settle on Barbarian, which you've never seen, mm-hmm. which I think is a fantastic, you know, scary horror film genre movie because it just does something different. If you haven't seen it, you got to watch it because it starts off your typical horror movie girl shows up at night pouring rain to an airbnb but there's somebody already there you know and she's skeptical at first she sticks around they have a little bit of chemistry and then of course chaos ensues but then all of a sudden like cuts sunny day in la it's justin long you know and there's like some bit of like levity and comedic relief turns out this airbnb belongs to him he's got to go back to this airbnb he's got to resolve some shit that he got into but these two people that were staying in this airbnb are still there for reasons um and then he gets dragged into it all and it's just it's kind of funny it's totally out there it's totally ridiculous but i just like this like spin that they put on it all but we were kind of laughing or commenting on the different tropes of scary movies about how whenever someone's like they're almost free from the the grips of whatever the monster or whatever the evil is and what do they do they go back inside they fucking run towards it they run toward it it's like well it's like in scary movie they have it's like what's her name so hot carmen electra and it's like death safety and she's like (laughs) goes to death like that's literally and i mean mind you I think, have we made it clear? We're both big scary movie people. Yeah. And so I see, like, there's just, like, no scary movie besides that one apparently I hadn't seen. So I, like, am involved deeply in the genre. And it's so frustrating when you can completely see where it's going. And you're like, we would not die. We'd do yeah. great in any of these scenarios because I would just do the sensible thing. It, well, and I, mean, I understand it's a movie, but can someone please make a scary movie in which someone does the right things and, like, still gets fucked over? Because that would be scary to me. Although I have no survival skills, there's no fucking way I'm running towards danger. There's a... A long stairway that's going down to darkness. Do you know what I'm not going to do? Run down there. You're like, let me just get this rickety flashlight that I go, it turns it on, I go, tut, tut, and it just, and you have to smack it. Oh, I'm just going to toss it behind me and just keep going. If you don't have a fucking mag light, perhaps you shouldn't go down there. Not to be a prepper, but I'm like, you guys, you know, none of you should be doing that. The guy's going, help me, help me. She goes, what are you doing down there? Help me. Okay. You I'm hear coming. a shout in the distance. It's like, ah. <laughs> She's like, I should probably go check that out alone. You stay here. Come back up here. No, come down here. Okay. I personally don't mind scary movies. I enjoy them. I don't get easily scared and I hate when you just know what's going to happen and it's so predictable, especially with thrillers and horror movies, all of that. I will say one of my favorite all-time series, it's a series, the Saw movies. I think that those are so incredible well put together well thought out it takes on the fears of what those people's biggest fears are to put them in a test to 
have the will to want to even survive to get through it and all that. And I think, though it's not like a scary movie, it's definitely a thriller and very well thought out, well made, and incredibly genius in a crazy, insane, psychotic way. If you get what I mean here. <laughs> I also have a hard time finding one that doesn't surprise me because I just like each step of the way you're like, oh, they're doing this. They shouldn't be doing this. Nope, you shouldn't be doing that. And they just do it and do it. Well, th this one surprised me a little bit. Not necessarily. Kind of. Yeah, a little bit. Um, Cabin in the Woods, though, that one surprised me. Yeah, I'm not saying it's never happened. I'm no, just saying it's not. But I, and I will say my favorite thing about a scary movie is when there's perfectly timed comic relief. All scary movies should have moments of that. And that was, Justin Long was amazing. That was very funny. I like him a lot. And yeah. He was great in it. But yeah, don't ever run up or you don't run down. You run away. But you know what? Then you wouldn't have a scary movie. That's what I'm saying. So I challenge A24, if you're out there, if you're listening, if you're a fan of us, if you're a fan of Girth Master, I'm sure he loves scary movies too. Please make a scary movie in which someone does all the right things and is still, and still in trouble. Stuck in it. Well, I think maybe It Follows kind of does that a little bit because it just, mm -hmm. if you can't really get away from it. That's why it's so terrifying. It's going to find you. <gasps> if that noise <laughs> it follows is one of my favorite scary movies i'd say that that shit's terrifying that is like an perfectly executed scary movie like fantastic concept I, okay so there we go so that's a good one so more of they that should take more of those more of it follows more of that where it's like they're getting away by any means possible but you ain't getting away you ain't getting away <gasps> yeah it's nightmare well and i'm just so i'm lit tired all the time I'm so I, would, I would be what happened now 10 times more exhausted what you mom's world is that not an oh yeah, oh yeah okay thank you the can fucking kangaroos. <laughs> this whole show is now turning Australian, but only I feel like millennials will get that. You, but I, that's you. You're uh, turning Australian. That's true. I still say le tired. I'm le tired. What happened up? Then fires me so. Then fires me so. Anyway, I don't think is a twenty four the one that's coming out where it's the perspective of the killer. The killer's dead, but then I don't know. Some people like resurrect this person and is smart. He's now killing every person in its path. That's gonna be scary. You did not respond to my text. If you want to see Immaculate this weekend? I'm not gonna be here this weekend. Oh, you're gone. Okay, well, you still could have reminded me. I, was, I didn't respond to it because I was annoyed that you forgot. That Ugh, okay. whatever. Maybe you should share your location with me. Anyway. I personally don't mind scary movies. I enjoy them. I don't get easily scared, and I hate when you just know what's going to happen, and it's so predictable, especially with thrillers and horror movies, all of that. I will say one of my favorite all-time series, it's a series, the Saw movies. I think that those are so incredible, well put together, well thought out. It takes on the fears of what those people's biggest fears are to put them in a test to have the will to want to even survive to get through it and all that. And I think though it's not like a scary movie, it's definitely a thriller and very well thought out, well made and incredibly genius in a crazy insane psychotic way if you get what i mean here <laughs> we buy heart we get dinner we scare the server because we're ravenous animals we're rabid dogs we also are dressed really great contrary to what life and style says count your days life and style your days are fucking numbered pache we go to pache, we go to pache. which pache. is one of the best restaurants one of my favorite restaurants in la <laughs> Laurel Canyon. delicious italian mm -hmm. restaurant it's and it's nice but it's not like w how we were dressed was not appropriate but we get <laughs> pizza we get pasta I think we started with something. We got a Caesar. We got a Caesar. We're feasting. The rosemary sourdough bread that I just <sighs> could not get enough of. Espresso martinis. We're getting hoisted. They have a little grocery store next door. We get wine. Smart. We go home. I had like parked at Katie's house playing going home. And I was like, well, guess I'm staying here. Let's do our skincare routine. And we did like I've talked about this before. We do this sometimes when we're tipsy. We just we, and we were glowing at. And by the way, it was early still. It was like nine or ten, which was great because we had a lot of time for movies. No, it was we left at 815 because I was laughing. I'm like. We would have just been getting from Poch. Oh, from yeah. Poch. Okay, yeah. So it's early. So we're glowing. We are comfortable. We watch Barbarian. Next step two. We're like, okay, what's a good bedtime movie? The Craft. The Craft. <laughs> <laughs> we are those girls. Are it's like, what's your comfort movie? The Craft. It is. It is. It is so great. But and it's like such a wonderful throwback. But we're like giddy because it's just everything's funny and we're drunk and we're like watching this movie. And then I proceed to have the most horrific nightmare. So it wasn't like after consuming Girth Masters content and then having like a dream that was fun. I consume this and then I've also been rewatching Sopranos. I watched it once. I stopped it. I immediately started it again. I wasn't aware this wasn't normal until very recently. I just obsessively rewatch things constantly all the time. So I'm like rewatching it for a second time immediately in succession. And so my dream was about I was at Tony and Carmela's house <laughs> and Tony was mad because <gasps> Carmela kept eating cockroaches and like snakes and bugs. And she was like hiding them. Ugh, it makes me like cringe. 
Because in the movie, there's, you know, the scene at the end, the big climax where there's all the bugs everywhere and the snakes and whatever. I know that's where that came from. Okay. Yeah. So I had a horrible dream about insects being everywhere and Carmela eating them and me watching it and then Tony being big mad about it. And then Ghostmaster comes in and <laughs> <laughs> saves the day. I wish. He just comes. He's like, all of, all of the stuff you've been consuming. My worlds collide. Yeah. His snake kills all the other snakes. No, that's unfortunately not what happened. He was not my white and shining armor. Yeah, that was upsetting. But that's what we do. Like, I just prefer a scary movie pretty much at all times. Dana has some pretty crazy and incredible dreams that I think a dream analyst would be awesome to have on as a guest to kind of analyze what these dreams mean for her since her dreams are so vivid and she can remember them and they're so detailed. I think it would be amazing for them to have a dream analyst come in and analyze all of them. Even the girth master. So the next part of the podcast, they really just go into talking about face app for like 15 minutes and why they love it. They get into millennials and how we're really the last generation that had like no access to the internet like other generations now have, where it's like complete access to anything whenever they want and how like Gen Z and other generations will just never experience what it was like before the internet really existed with like how blockbuster, how hard it was to get a movie and how you couldn't just go on a streaming app and choose a movie and watch it right then and there. Like you had to hope that it was in stock and like someone returned it and all of that and that it was rewound, <laughs> like disposable cameras, um, how long it took to download music from Napster LimeWire and how you had to hope that it wasn't a virus either and you couldn't preview it until it was completely done and just how impatient our society has gotten and how patience is something that not a lot of kids and people have nowadays because of the accessibility we have to everything, even like online grocery shopping, things like that. I liked the conversation. I felt, though, it kind of wasn't needed for this episode. If you do want to check it out, the link to the entire podcast will be down below. But I figured since we are here for the tea of it all, last week's episode, not only did they talk about Girthmaster, but... Katie also went into the max buoyance of it all. And as you may recall, if you are a VPAR fan like I am, that max buoyance did date Dana. And it was something very intimate with these two. And it was very tumultuous. So by Katie not only screwing Max, who is Schwartz's best friend, she was also screwing someone that her bestie dated for a long time and had issues with. And it was just so much tea spilled that I had to bring it to you guys. So let's not waste any time. Let's hear the Max buoyance of it all. Should we get the, the, the main thing out of the way? Yeah, I'd say so. The thing that people want to hear us talk about. The big tattooed elephant in the room. <laughs> Ew. Ew. Yeah. The latest episode of Vanderpump Rules, there was a, an event that took place. Sure was. So <laughs> I'm going to let you talk about it first. I want to, because I'm curious, like, watching that episode back, what, what you felt about it or if it, your feelings have changed about how ca things kind of came out. And perhaps maybe people are behind. So spoiler mm -hmm. alert, if you're not caught up on Vanderpump Rules, maybe give some context. Okay. So what happened um, on this episode, the thing that we're talking about is that I had relations with Max Boyens who Dana also previously had relations with when she came into Vanderpump Rules back, I don't know what year it was, but in season eight. Mm -hmm. I hate referring to like my life and this life in seasons because it's like, it's life, you know, it's not like show. But anyway, so yeah, it happened this night. We went to Hotel Ziggy and um, there's a lot of alcohol involved, like a lot. And um, it came to light because Sheena has Max's location. She has apparently like 56 people's location, not mine. So she was able to see his location at my place and, you know, from there. And then Brock knew that as well. And, you know, because it was like not on camera, Max isn't on the show. I wasn't going to bring it to the show. There's no reason. The only person I was going to bring it to would be you because you're, you know, it's kind of like a need to know basis. So yeah, then it kind of blows up 
watching it back and hearing it, kind of people weigh in on it, of course, like Tom Schwartz was like, what? Max? Max? You know, like, like I, I wasn't surprised by his reaction per se. And I honestly didn't care. Like, I don't owe him anything. I don't really care. He kind of blew um, our whole like agreement of not hooking up with friends or people in this group to bits when he did that whole thing with Rochelle. <laughs> Rachelle, last year. I always accidentally call her Raquel. Like I jump back and forth. I'm really not trying to be any kind of way. So maybe we should just call her Rachel. It's like when I, whenever I'm thinking about like that time, like, I, I'm tempted to call her Raquel. But then when I'm trying to like, it's just like Rachel, <laughs> Rachel, Rachel. I wasn't. I think Rachel is a better name for her, actually. If you think about it, Raquel, Rachel. We all get confused because she changed her name and she was known for a long time as. Raquel and now she wants to be Rachel so Rachel <laughs> sounds so much better it kind of reminds me of like Rochella I think or whatever they called the Rachel Coachella <laughs> Rochella that sounds so bad Roach <laughs> but I will say Katie has every right not to give a shit who she slept with especially after Schwartz did what he did with Rachel. And a lot of people I've seen are upset that she didn't give a fuck and the hypocrisy and all of that. Once that, like, truce is broken, the truce does not exist anymore. And I think that that's a big reason why Katie was being kind of, in the sense, revengeful and trying to one-up him with everything, like the date with Tori, all of that. Because she's just done with his BS and not giving a shit about his feelings because he does not care about hers. And it is very abundantly clear after all of these years. He never took his wife's side on anything when they were together. And he still does not give a fucking shit. And you know what? She cares way too much. Let her do her thing, boo. And it's not hypocrisy. Is it weird that she's sleeping with her friend's best, like her best friend's ex-boyfriend? Yeah, but Dana will talk about that. Is it weird that she's sleeping with her ex-husband's best friend? Yeah, that is weird. Shit happens, though. I technically am dating my ex-boyfriend's friend, if we want to go there. Like, thinking about anything, unfortunately, which isn't like an excuse. Um, But like, I think to explain it, my headspace would be like a runaway train in like the simplest of ways. I think coming from the season previous, which was awful and terrible, and then coming back into the season, which was awful and terrible in different ways, I had found out that like Tom and Sheena had like kept something from me. And it's like, even though I like, it's not like I didn't care, it didn't feel like good. It's like once again, I'm in a space that's like not safe. People don't give a fuck about me. People don't support me. And I think I just kind of like was wasted and I was just like, I don't give a Ah, it was selfish and reckless and it was a runaway train like I just like didn't think about anything and then it was like the next day I was like oh that was not a good place to be in because obviously like the first thing I thought about was you because I was like I don't do that I'm not somebody that like competes with my friends or like tries to get me a validation of like hooking up with people that my friends hooked up with I don't know I don't like to like cross contaminate yeah. in that sense period I just I don't do that I don't break like girl code like that so I was just like fuck I was like I want to talk to Dana immediately I don't text I'm not gonna I can't like text you I don't want even want to pick up the phone and call you I was like I want to see you and tell you and I knew that like and whatever happens like I have to like accept that if you're like fuck you I never want to talk and I think this says a lot about Katie that she knew it was wrong she knew that she had to face whatever consequences came her way since she did something that was so unlike what she ever would possibly do she is correct she is not the type to want to cross contaminate if anybody on this show katie has been the one person that one has not cheated and two has not cross contaminated slept with anyone else's anyone until technically season 11, where now she's kissing the same person that Schwartz is and sleeping with the same person her bestie had relations with. I do think that says exactly where Katie's mindset is at this moment. Well, during the season, not right now, this moment in time. Um, she was in a dark place and she was trying to find herself, find her way. She has not been single in a long time. And I think a lot of people forget that as well. Not everyone heals 
the same way. So like Ariana, yeah, she, you know, picked up, moved on and did what she had to do. That's wonderful and great. Some people are like that. Some people aren't. Katie wants to, you know, figure out what mistakes she made to better her situation. And I think it took a little time to realize that's exactly what she wanted because she was so vulnerable and hurt from everything she had been through. And I actually read something, I forgot where it was, I think it was on Instagram, where people were like, you know, Katie was the girl that had traumatic brain injury, fell through a roof, people gaslit her for fucking years, and yet they call her the monster, when literally she has been gaslit, has the most trauma, and has been brainwashed and manipulated by people and she has traumatic brain injury. The way they worded it was so much better than the way I'm describing it. And if I can find it, I will insert it in after this for you. But it like rings so true. Like, you know, I never thought of it that way. And that's why I like that we all have our own opinions and thoughts about everything going on. Because sometimes when you guys are saying things, it's like, you know what? I didn't think of that. Or I didn't think of it that way. And I love that we can all communicate and chat and talk about everything that's happening and get a different perspective or be understanding about the perspective that we both have. But like I said, I think it shows Katie's character that like her first thought was, oh my God, I just need to talk to my best friend. I cannot believe I did this. So let's see what Dana has to say now. Again, I have to accept that. And I hate that because like I did that to myself, but like I have to accept that because of like my own actions you know but i couldn't undo it obviously then when it comes out on the show and production hears about it they're like oh well now we're going to take control of this and how you're going to like tell dana and i had to like hold it so <laughs> i mean i guess and also we need to give more context and first of all i'm getting blown up right now about it because obviously people who remember me from the show remember that mm-hmm. i was dating max back in the day so people are like oh do you have an opinion of course i have an opinion <laughs> about it duh obviously i feel how I feel and we're going to get into that. So for context, some people who don't like me or, you know, I'm sure most people are indifferent would believe that I got fired from Vanderpump Rules. Definitely did not get fired from Vanderpump Rules. I left on my own accord and Mm -hmm. I was asked back for season nine, for season 10, and then for season 11. It came down to a lot of things for me that it, in terms of it not being a good fit, but financially it's funny that people think you're on the show and you make all this money, but you get paid very little to nothing when you first start out. Mm -hmm. And so it just kept not making sense for me for many different reasons, but that was a big factor. So in season 11, when they came back around, they're like, okay, we can have you film, but we're not going to pay you anything and whatever. And I was just like, no, I don't. It's just not worth it for me and whatever. And then that was toward the end. That was like the last month of filming. They were like, okay, we're going to bring you back into the pocket. Here's some dog food in terms of money. But like, you know, why not? And I kind of was just like, okay, they brought me in. And the first day of filming was that conversation. I obviously did not know what the conversation was about. I knew that we were going to an event later. And then you sat me down and told me and Ariana was there. And then I, we like went to a thing. And then the next day, I had a full blown panic attack about the show. Like, I'm sure if you look back at all the things that I've said about it, it can seem wishy washy. And I understand that. But like, there were positives for me being on the show, but there were also negatives. And it was very detrimental to my mental health. And like, mm-hmm. I don't like fighting with people. And you've said this before, like, you don't like it either. But like, I just, my threshold for that in my normal day to day life, I do not have people in my life that I just fight with all the time. It's not a mm-hmm. thing. If it's going to be that way, then those aren't relationships I keep around. So it's hard for that to translate for me for something that, you know, is your work. And so I quit. I quit immediately. So you'll probably see me on the next episode is split in the background. And people I'm sure will be like, why is she there? Because I was yeah. thinking about it. But then I was just like, you know what? I hate this. Like, I'm not doing this. Which I'm really happy that Dana cleared that up because I know I've heard these rumors that Dana was fri- fired before. And I knew she wasn't. She's mentioned it before. But so many people insist that she was fired And here she is saying she was never fired. She was even asked back, even for last season, even for this season. And I agree, like, if she knows that it's not good for her mental health, her well-being, there is no point in doing it, especially if they're not paying you anything. And we know, like, the first season of VPR, they got $1,000 for the entire season. And I know that was like back in the day when when prices were down, the economy was, you know, different, but it still wouldn't have amounted to much if she even did VPR this season. And you know what's crazy? Like production grabbed a hold of it. Like they must have heard the conversation and been like, "Uh uh-uh, Katie, now you can't say anything. Or, like, was with Sheena and was like, oh, my God, Max was over at Katie's. Like, and then production found out. Like, I find that very interesting to know. And then once they find out, they're like, 
because you're on this show. Now we're going to set this up for you. Which Dana, like she said, was considering it. And then after everything was like, nope, 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 nope. Still not good. I don't even know why I entertained this thought. And she has every right to do that and make sure it's still not good for her. Which I do appreciate her explaining all of that. I mean, my initial reaction, I was I was shocked. I was when you told me because I when I when I didn't know what the context of the conversation was, I was just like, I didn't know what I was expecting we'd be talking about, but I certainly didn't think it would be that. I think my main thing about it is I do not want my name mentioned in the same sentence as his name ever again for the rest of my life. And I'm sure that he also feels that way. So it kind of felt like I was then again lumped into this narrative that I just didn't had not wanted to be part of for a really long time. And so it was more about that. We've obviously talked about it, but the thing that bothered me more than anything is that this event happened between the two of you and you didn't know if I was going to be upset about it. And then, like you said, would have to like answer to that after. And it, and it could have affected our friendship, but I could not have a lower opinion of Max Boyens if I tried. <laughs> it is in the gutter. It is at the core of the earth. And again, to be fair to him, because although he thinks I'm a fucking psycho, I'm actually very level headed. He feels the same way about me. And that's totally fine. There were times when we were cool. Actually, the night, the last episode, we talked about catching Joe and Rachel with Tom and Tom at that bar we all go to. Max showed up that night and Max and I had been cool. He asked me to meet for coffee like maybe six months before that or something. We hashed it out. We were basically just like, this has been done for a long time. We see things differently. And we all we were all drinking a lot. And he ended up flipping out on me and screaming at me for an hour, which you and Raleigh sat there and watched. Things that he was saying about what happened between us. I'm like, your view of reality is so distorted. And he blamed me for a lot of things that he needs to take responsibility for himself mm -hmm. in his own life. The things that, that hurt me the most about it is Max is not someone I look at that like, oh my God, this was someone I seriously dated and I was obsessed with him and whatever. It, well, at the time, obviously, I really was down bad for him. But meaning now, I'm like, he could have sex with anyone. I don't care. And not to mention, Max also owes me nothing. Like, of course, like it's, it's been so long and it really didn't matter. But the thing that bothered me about it is more so that Max has treated me very poorly for years and has been a malignancy in my life for years, way beyond us dating. So that it was more just like, not even a girl code thing. We're just like, uh, this person has been, you know, really bad to me. And, and I still would consider that to be. And Dana makes very valid points here. She doesn't want to be ever associated with Max again. And there are just those ex-boyfriends that I can agree. You don't ever want to be associated with. You don't want your name in the same sentence as his name ever again. Um, so I get that. I also get where she's coming from where like he doesn't owe her anything and she doesn't owe him anything. So that's why it doesn't matter that Katie slept with him. The issue at hand more was that Katie knew everything that Max had said did put her through. And here Katie did what she did. But she also can recognize when someone is just completely fucking utterly trashed and not giving a fuck. And her sleeping with Max amounted to nothing, zero, nada, never happened again, where like with Rachel and Tom is a completely different situation, not Schwartz, Sandoval. And I don't get why people even tried to compare those, but there are people out there that have been comparing it and it's just two completely different situations. And there is nothing that says that Katie can't do what she did. Is it right? No. And she admits that she did not feel good the minute she woke up and she even realized she did what she did. That's where, you know, a person has a heart, pride, understanding, and cares for their friends. And that's where I'm like, where, where did Rachel not wake up and ever feel that? Clearly she didn't. She let it go on for seven months. Oh, and Joe not knowing. Ooh, that pissed me off in this episode. And then sitting there and continuously saying she did not know. How would she have known? Bitch, Dana is just even talking about how you were at a bar with Max, Tom, and Tom, and Joe, and Rachel. You know, your name's there, Joe. And how you were around for everything. So if Rachel can, you know, name names and name Max, why didn't she name Joe? Joe fucking knew. I don't give a fudge what Joe has to say. And I'm trying not to swear, but I really don't give a fudge what she has to say. I know Joe knew. There is no way in hell she did not know. Just like there's no way in hell that Schwartz didn't know. Well, yeah, but so I'm saying people are like, wait, how do you feel to your ex? I'm like, oh, I don't look at it like that. Like, it's, uh, of course, 
there are feelings about it, but more than anything, I was not going to let Max interfere one more relationship in my life. And you are one of my best friends. And of course, it wasn't like I heard that. And it was like, oh my God, that's thrilling. Tell me about it. Like, mm-hmm. it was more just like, okay, this happened. And also, Max slept with a girl that I was really good friends with a few years ago. Again, Max didn't owe me anything. And it was a, it was a different situation. It truly, like, I hold her to a different standard because the scenario went down. And also how she told me, like, you were very anxious about it and you were very upset about it. And because of the show, you had restraints as to when you could tell me and how you could tell me. And yeah, it was just a very different thing. She wasn't on a show being told like, you have to wait till this day and whatever. And it just like, obviously was really icky to me. However, I'm honestly grateful for that because that girl was, you know, those friends that like aren't really your friend, but pretend to be for whatever reason. And Mm -hmm. I have my own theories as to why she never wanted to be friends with me, but she was just always very competitive with me and was just gross. And it, it made me realize that and like cut her out of my life immediately. And, but then also there was other things that were going on that it just, it highlighted. So I'm actually like grateful that that had happened because who knows if I would have seen her for who she was. But it also just felt triggering in that way, though, just because I'm like, Max, you don't owe me anything, but like, get go away. Like, I just fucking can't. And more than anything, like I said, I just don't want to be mentioned in the same. I like to forget that he and I ever dated. And I think what's important here is that Dana can recognize the difference, like how Katie was remorseful. She was regretful. She wanted to tell her. She knew Dana understood about the restraints, all of that. She was apologetic. She wanted to take accountability. She knew she fucked up. Where like the other girl, she was grateful it all went down because it showed her who that person really was. And if Katie was like that girl, it would then show her who Katie really is. But Katie is not that girl. Completely two different situations even there as well. And like I said, it shows me that Dana can tell the difference. She knows what's best for her. She understands her friends. And if she is okay with it, then why is anybody else bitching about it? Because she clearly understands and that's all that matters she understands her friend she forgives her friend and they're still friends like she said she's not gonna let max ruin another relationship of hers truly he is the one person i i don't i'm not like not cool with anyone i've ever dated there are people i don't speak to just because for my own you know mental wellness i just cut people out and move on but like wish them well he's the only person that i'm like full stop hardcore regret i also take a lot of accountability for the way i let him treat me And for, you know, he was a big one where it was like he was saying something very different to me than he was saying to other people. But actions speak louder than words. And it was so clear that, like, he didn't like me enough to want to date me or whatever. and was leading me on and was lying. And I just didn't want to believe it. So, like, I I totally am accountable for that. He's in his own category as far as anyone I've ever dated. So, of course, anyone that I'm so close to to be involved with him in any way because of that. Yeah, it's, of course it's done. But it wasn't, it just was like, you're so much more important to me than a petty situation that happened when you were drunk with someone who I don't hold in high, reg- high regard. Yeah. Well, and like I told you, you're more important to me than any of that as well. So I don't want you to think that that you are disposable to me or that like, you know, I just that, that I just wanted to try to explain the headspace I was in that it was just. Well, and also yeah. for, for people listening to this, we obviously have talked about this privately. Mm-hmm. And also this happened in August. Yeah. So it's currently March when we're recording this. So it's like that was another thing for the show that was hard for me, which I'm sure is hard for all of you that you're on it. You mm-hmm. live these things and then you go through it again six months later. Yeah. And to hear people say like, oh, it was a long time coming. Says who? That wasn't my opinion, and that's not how I felt about it. Yeah, actually, I'm glad you brought that up. That that rubbed me the wrong way when I watched it back. It was like it was a long time coming. I don't necessarily see it like that, even from what I've seen and like know from behind closed doors. But I'm just like, I don't know if that was just to try to make it more interesting, or if, or if Max really believes that. But also, Max, I feel like feels like everyone's fair game. Like I know for a fact that he reached out to a mutual friend of ours when Tom and Ariana broke up. Obviously, when he cheated on her and you know really hurt her, and was like, would it be weird if I asked? Ariana out to drinks that doesn't shock me at all I mean I was I was surprised because Max and Tom and I would hang out all the time Mm, very interesting so Max was interested in Ariana after everything it seems to me that Max is what they call the classic fuck boy that's the vibes he gives off and it reads very much on his face too Clearly. Yeah. Like the three of us. So um, I was surprised that after Tom and I split that, like, I don't know, he would like respond to like one of my stories and be like, oh, like, what's that? And I was like, you know, in like a, in a way that. Flirting. Yeah. And I was like. Or could be interpreted as flirting. It became more obvious like that. And I was like, odd. Well, yeah. In the situation more than anything, I mean, it doesn't sound like Shorts really cares or is fine with it. But no, like and that- <laughs> more than anything, that is like, again, I think it speaks to 
personally, it does back up my my view and perception of who Max is. He does not give a fuck. That is one of your best friend's ex-wives. It's way more on their thing is weirder, way weirder to me. But that's how he is. He literally will just try and hook up with anyone at any time. I don't think he has any standards as far as like who he could hurt. Like it's just how he operates. Damn. <laughs> yeah. I definitely wasn't the aggressor in the situation. And how did you feel watching that back that they cut it? Well, and then also like there was the after show where your version of it was very different than everyone else's, what they were talking about. Like, what would you say about that? I feel like that was also try, trying to really highlight and call back to like last year of like when I was doing the whole like, don't hook up with anyone in the group and trying to paint this like hypocritical sort of like thing or could it be a double standard thing, you know? And it's just it was like, I thought it was very clear about Tom and I were trying to have this like friendship and that was one of the stipulations to maintain a friendship. But again, Tom was the one that blew that to bits. So that no longer exists. So and everyone was just trying to be like, oh, that's so hypocritical. What's the double standard here, Katie? So I think that I don't know if that was like to try to support that. But I didn't like that. And I didn't appreciate that because at this point, like that don't exist. But, but not to say like, oh, if it was Max or someone else, but it's just like, again, it wasn't a long time coming. It wasn't premeditated. It wasn't anything like it couldn't anyone then. <laughs> and I have to agree. I don't believe that this was premeditated or that this was a long time coming. I don't think that the two situations are the same at all. And I understood exactly where she was coming from, where like the truce was broken when Tom did what he did with Rachel, whether like it was a kiss or not. They had a stipulation and plan. They were trying to be friends after their divorce. And these were the rules they set in place together. Not like Katie just saying it. Tom agreed to it as well. And then, you know, he didn't give a fuck. He wanted to test the waters. He was enticed because everyone was enticing him. Or it was to cover up what his friend was doing. We still don't know that answer, do we? I was in a very fine form that night. <laughs> the checking the location of it all under the guise of like, just wanted to make sure people got home safe. Like, we're grown adults. And I, I had forgotten that Sheena had texted me like, oh, text me when you get home. Like, ma'am, I was gone that night. So sorry that I couldn't recall you asking that because she posted on her story or something like, interesting. Because then after show, I was like, oh, you weren't concerned about my safety. I'm sorry, I couldn't recall a text message uh, from three o'clock in the morning or whatever. Like, you got me there. I felt like, my privacy was invaded. Do you believe that she was doing it to check on his safety? No. I think she just was like, when she realized that we had left together, she wanted to like, just be, she got kind of like giddy and, about it. and A and nosy the, Parker. A no, yeah. It's fine. But again, to like bring it up on the show like that with someone who's not a part of it. And then, I don't know. It just, it just was like weird. I mean, I don't know. I didn't like any of it. I want to leave this conversation here. And specifically, I never want to speak about Max Boynes again. It goes without saying, I can't put mm -hmm. Max in my basement because he's never left my basement. But Max <laughs> is definitely in my basement and has stayed there. Fair. I think that's all there's to say about that. There you go. That's the um the tea on that. That's the tea. That's the scoop. I think people are so funny and silly that obvious, obviously we were going to talk about it and have opinions on it. And like I said, I'm excited to never discuss this again. It's just <laughs> like, and again, this happened a long time ago. So yeah, it's not that deep, guys. And I could totally see where Katie is coming from, where, like, Sheena knew that Katie was obliterated. She was toasty. So her texting her at 3 a.m. and then not getting a response, I don't think it was because she really cared if her friend got home safe or not. Not saying that she didn't care, but, like, that's not the reason. And I do agree with Katie that like Sheena was kind of giddy when she saw that Max was taking Katie home which is weird because Sheena also had some kind of relationship with Max as well but hey that's how that friend group works um is it weird that it was Max's location and not Katie's yeah because you would think that Sheena would have Katie's not Max's since she's closer to Katie than Max um the sharing of locate lo like that whole thing weird weird I mean I don't share my location I know it's like an iPhone feature I don't got no iPhone I got an Android I know that Android is capable I just don't care and my boyfriend doesn't share his like it's not important though that is a good idea to do with my grams thanks Sheena for that one but that is pretty much it I wanted to bring 
a mix of both of the episodes because I think it was highly important that we heard about, well, the girth master. I think that was just hilarious. We needed some sense of relief with everything that's been going on. Then the iHeartRadio Awards, that was important. And of course, the max buoyance of it all, we needed to know that. So if you are want to see the full entire podcast, they have it up on their podcast YouTube channel, which will be linked down below. So definitely go check it out. If you enjoyed this, let me know if you enjoyed this kind of style where I just bring kind of the tea and not really anything else. Like that's not really not important, but not important per se, because we're here for the tea kind of a thing. Or if this is something that you would want the full episode with the tea or not, let me know. I love bringing what you guys like. I listen to these anyways. So if this is something you all enjoyed, I would be happy to bring this back. I hope you all have a wonderful night. I hope you all have a wonderful weekend because it's the weekend now, guys. And make sure you like this video, make sure you comment, let me know what you think, and subscribe to my channel and go back and hit your notifications to all so you can get notified every time I post a video or go live. Like I said, I got more coming. It never stops. I literally have Rachel's podcast. Lala decided to do two Amazon Lives in one week, though she only does usually once a month. And just everything else that I could bring to you guys, like the Faith lawsuit, that's coming too. So make sure you are subscribed. All right, guys. Have a wonderful weekend. Bye, everyone. Actually, I wanted to ask you personally about this because what? on one of his videos, he was talking about he doesn't have a lot of personal play videos, like just him. And he had some and he was like, I thought it was more for my gay audience. Like women who follow me, I'm curious what your thoughts are. So many women were like, no, we love it. Sound up, whatever. Is that something that would tickle your fancy? No, I would say not no for me, but it wouldn't be something that I'd be like, send me a bit of that. Like I wanted immediately, especially with a stranger on the internet. No, I, I, it's never really occurred to me or been a thought that I'd want to watch a dude. No. Yeah, but I was, well, I was surprised because I'm not obviously king shaming anyone. I love it if that's what you no, like. No, I'm just saying it. for me personally, yeah. that's never been like, wow, do you know what I feel like is missing from my like repertoire? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, um, no, I'm just saying like, but I guess you listen, something for everyone out there. But yeah, that's what I'm saying. So I was just curious. I wanted to pull you. I'd be curious to see like, listening to this who feels that way but yeah a lot of women were like sound up and i was like you little freak <laughs> yeah love you little In freak interesting if it does it for you get it i mean i have another dream about him so we got to move on yeah well we just spent a lot of time on that one where like, do you go from girth master i know I'm i have like, some so many things on our note for the show are so like funny we're